All right, thanks so much, Jess. Hi, everybody. I'm Teo Caridwin. Um, I'm going to be your presenter today. Uh, this is Making Your Name, Changing Your Legal Name for the Trans and Non-Binary Community. Uh, so I'm mostly gearing this uh, presentation towards the trans and non-binary communities because uh, given the current cultural climate, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit intimidating, but it's also, you know, just changing your name on your own for whatever reason you choose. Uh, it can also be a very intimidating and daunting task. So today I'm here to provide you with the necessary information and guidance to empower your identity. Whether you are seeking a fresh start, aligning with your true self, or embracing your heritage, this presentation will equip you uh, with the knowledge and resources needed to navigate <clears throat> the legal process uh, a bit more smoothly and a bit more confidently. So, whoops. All right, so real quick, who the heck am I? Uh, my name is, I have chosen my name to be Teo Raya Caridwin. Uh, why Teo? Uh, I think the, the most logical answer is I was told very early on when I was studying French that um, to learn a new language is to grow a new body. Uh, and I think my gender <laughs> ended up in the French language somehow, uh, along with, you know, it's, there are more constituent pieces to my identity, but that's one of them. Uh, I'm also a huge nerd, so Teoraya is a theory nerd. Uh, Caridwin, Caridwin, uh, so my COVID hobby was witchcraft, not bread making, and I consider myself a, a humanist witch. So Caridwin, according to Welsh legends and folklore, uh, was a white witch or goddess and is considered the goddess of poetry, inspiration, uh, and of transfiguration and, and transformation. I actually didn't know who this uh, <laughs> uh, character was in Welsh legend. Um, it just sort of like was a eureka moment. I'm like, ah, that's my last name. So a little bit of magic there. Uh, so yeah, so surnames often answer like to whom do I belong? I decided I belong to the witches. Uh, and then real quick, how did I get here? I finished up my MFA in poetry at the University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, uh, August, 2021. I hopped on a plane September 1st <laughs> with uh, three suitcases, two pairs of shoes and one dog, uh, moved to Santa Fe, did some work on myself, did a lot of self-exploration, figured out I'm not a girl uh, and that I fall under the trans um, umbrella. So, and then I got into the process of changing my legal name because it felt right. Uh, and it's something I wanted to do. Uh, and I'm here to show you that you can too. So let's keep going. So real quick, I wanna just outline the objectives of today's presentation. We're gonna spend our time understanding the legal framework by exploring specific requirements to legally change your name in New Mexico. Um, I am building a public Google Drive folder at the moment, uh, and mostly it's just New Mexico documents, um, but I do plan on putting all 50 states in there. And then there's also a website um, that I'm going to include that's already done a lot of the work already. Um, but I'm gonna do some research to see if there's more that uh, we can add in there. <laughs> so the lion's share of this presentation will help you to navigate the documentation process. Uh, we'll discuss the necessary documents, forms, and supporting evidence you will need to gather and present uh, to legally change your name. Um, we're gonna address some common challenges and potential roadblocks and strategies and how to overcome them. Uh, and then towards the uh, end of the presentation and during, uh, there's a dedicated Q&A section uh, that Jess is uh, very generously tending to. Um, so feel free to not only ask questions about the legal name change process experience, but also questions pertaining to the social aspects of legally changing your name, because uh, it's a bit awkward at first and a little later, but we can talk about that. All right. So first off, let's talk about uh, legal name changes. Why would somebody want to do that? very cumbersome. <laughs> it's a lot of paperwork. It costs money. So, you know, marriage is 10, you know, changing a woman's surname tends to be the most common uh, desire for a legal name change. Also, we have adoption, cultural alignment, personal preference, fresh start, divorce, spiritual reasons, gender identity, uh, and stage names. I forgot to, yeah, I guess that would go under personal preference, though. Um, also, you know, uh, <laughs> some parents have misspelled their child's name and that adult child then wants to, you know, correct the spelling. Uh, 
I was reading a story about somebody who got doxxed real bad, uh, and then she ended up changing her name, uh, pronunciation, and sometimes people do it for cultural assimilation. So a little bit more. Um, this gives you a, a pretty basic overview about what you should be expecting, um, or you know, also who is. Uh, this is the process, basically. <laughs> so it's I, I have information here of like what is a name change? Who can change their name? So in the state of New Mexico, you have to be 14 years old to legally change your name on your own. If you're 13 years or younger, you have to have a legal guardian, a parent, um, take care of that for you. So is the legal name change process any different for trans or non-binary folks? Absolutely not. Uh, it's the same across the board. It is a genderless process, which uh, I have some ideas for later on in this presentation we can talk about. So ideally the process takes about four to six weeks um, in a perfect world. Uh, it's more often about two months if you're on top of the paperwork and um, all of that. If you're traveling outside of the US soon, uh, maybe within the next two to three months, I would recommend not changing uh, your official documentation. Uh, you can get it changed locally, but it is your responsibility to then update all of your documentation. Uh, so just because you have your court date and it's all settled, you're not done yet. <laughs> um, so if you're worried about your safety, um, we're gonna talk about the, uh, the legal ad process. So in order to legally change your name, you have to run a legal ad in a publication within your state. Uh, for two weeks. So if you're in a situation in which you don't feel safe doing that um, and you're in danger, there is a form that New Mexico uh, provides that will exempt you from that legal advertisement uh, requirement. So, and like I said, the judge approved my name change. Am I done yet? Absolutely not. <laughs> so next up, where do I start? Uh, and this is where we're gonna get into the documents. So there are six pages um, that you're gonna print out. And this is already in the public uh, shared Google Drive that you can go in and just download immediately. Um, so there are six pages. The first one is the instructions. Um, you can just throw that right out. That's only if you're getting these documents uh, at the court, basically. Um, the lion's share of the documents are two through five. Um, those we're gonna pay particular attention to. Document, document number six is uh, just an interpreter form that says like, hey, I acknowledge that I have the opportunity to have an interpreter in court or um, you know, in the hearing. So pretty standard fare, but it must be filled out and submitted with all of your paperwork, even if you don't need an interpreter. And just to reiterate again, that first page with the instructions, recycle, <laughs> please. Um, and then the last page, this interpreter form. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and it must be submitted whether or not you need an interpreter. Next up. All right, we're going to get to the lion's share of the paperwork now. So the first document you're going to need is the petition for name change. Um, and that needs a public notary stamp. Uh, you can Google public notary. Um, you'll get all the hits, basically. Um, I went to the MVD Express to get mine done, or, you know, stamped, uh, and it was under $10. Um, so the next page is request for hearing. Next for, uh, is notice of name change. This is the document that you're going to send to a publication of your choice to run your legal ad. Uh, and this last one is the one that the judge is going to stamp. Um, so after your court hearing, you're going to obtain your order for your name change. And we'll get into more of that in a little bit. Okay, so let's start off. Uh, this is the first page. This is the one that you need the notary for. Um, let me look at it too. So you're gonna fill this out um, with your, your current legal name, uh, save for where it says on item number three that the petitioner requests a name change to the name of your choice. Uh, but all other places you're going to be putting your current legal name. Uh, and for the reasons, um, 
All you have to say is this is my preferred name and I wish to obtain proper identification. You don't have to you know, spill your soul or be like transgender reasons. You can put that down certainly, um, but you can just put this down. Uh, so petitioner pro se, that is you. And again, don't sign this document until you're in front of a notary. Uh, I almost made that mistake. ADHD is not the place to be. All right, so we're gonna go on to the next document. Are there any questions yet? Am I going too fast? There is one, um, Oliver asks, I thought New Mexico changed the law so you didn't have to run an ad beginning in July. Oh, um, well, I did not hear about this because uh, I did mine in, in spring, but if that is the case, um, I'd be happy to research that and then upload that to the information folder. Thank you very much. Um, I had no idea. So I don't know, and thank you uh, would happen to be the answer there. So do, do, do. Okay, so next up, this is the uh, second document in the lion's share of legal documents you need, uh, the request for the hearing. So you're gonna leave uh, a lot of this blank. Uh, the court is going to um, stamp it and assign the judge on it. Um, and then at the bottom, that's where you're gonna fill out your information. Uh, you're also gonna fill out, it's pretty much on every document, but up here, you're also gonna fill out your information, county, Santa Fe, then your name. All right. All right, so up next, publish change of name. Okay, and again, thank you for that information. All right. So this is, this is an important one. Um, so you're gonna choose a publication within your state, you know, the, what, Balbuquerque Journal, or I picked the Santa Fe New Mexican. You can also, um, what, submit your name legal ad to the reporter. Um, I'm not from here, so I don't know all the publications. Uh, all right, and the honorable, you're gonna leave that blank. Um, that The judge's name just gets stamped in there, excuse me. <laughs> So once you pick up your documents um, from the clerk, once the court has signed and stamped this form, they're also gonna give you a day and time for your uh, court hearing date. Um, and that's it. Uh, so what's gonna happen next is you scan it and you send it to the publication of your choice. Let's pretend you have picked the Santa Fe New Mexican. Great. All right. So this is my form uh, that's been filled out and stamped and it is official. So I scanned it and emailed it to, one second, I just want to move that. Never mind. Uh, so you're gonna email that uh, to Veronica Gonzalez. Uh, she works for the legal ads and obituaries desk at the Santa Fe New Mexican. And let me just delete this. It's the, the worst time to do this. That's, that's recorded for life now. Okay. Uh, but it's V Gonzalez uh, at sfnewmexican.com and her phone number is right there. So once you email that to her, she's going to send you a proof, you know, uh, ask for corrections, say yay or nay. Uh, you're going to pay over the phone. And for the Santa Fe New Mexican, it costs uh, $115. It is possibly cheaper with the Santa Fe reporter. Um, somebody told me in the live presentation of this that I did last week. Uh, I'm not certain, so I cannot say for fact, uh, but I have seen the legal ad name change stuff, you know, uh, in the reporter as well. Next up. Oh, goodness, I've made a mess of that. This PowerPoint is also gonna be um, available within that public Google folder uh, after this presentation. So if you're taking notes, we have this. Um, good. All right, so your uh, legal ad has been in the paper for two weeks. Yay. Uh, file both of these pages, um, the affidavit and the copy of the legal ad with the county clerk before your court hearing date. I have a great story, but 
please do that before your court hearing date. Um, let's see. So your court hearing, uh, come on in Zoom or just phone in. So order for a uh, change of name. <laughs> so as of spring 2023, uh, as I am presenting, I guess it's summer though, uh, the name change court hearings are still conducted over Zoom and over the phone because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So those protocols are still in place. Um, name change court hearings take about 10 minutes. Uh, and remember remember to, uh, to file it because let me tell you about my day. Um, so I was, I was ready. I bought myself a gluten-free chocolate cake attempting to like imbue the day with as much meaning, like without sincerity, but just, you know, making it kind of a special day. Um, and so I was just, you know, relaxing and whatever. And then 10 minutes before my hearing, uh, I realized my laptop camera wasn't working. Okay. So like change of plans. So I call in and I'm, I'm on the phone and then the judge gets on the line and he starts talking. And then about a minute in, uh, the judge asks, did you file your legal ad affidavit with the county court? Um, no, <laughs> I actually had filed it away in a drawer because uh, nobody told me. And apparently I didn't read the name change packet closely enough. Uh, so luckily the judge um, allowed me to go rummage around uh, and find the papers and then take a picture of it with my cell phone and then email it to him while we were on the phone uh, for the hearing. I, I had cake afterward though, so it was fine. <laughs> All right, so then two weeks later, uh, you're gonna wait about two weeks after your hearing date. And then you're gonna obtain this form. Um, I just, from the county clerk, um, you know, it's signed, sealed, delivered, and you have to do all the work now um, to get your certified copies. Certified copies cost about like a buck 50, um, and you're gonna need those because, you know, we'll talk about that soon. But this is the email address. Um, you're gonna inquire and say like, um, hey, got my name changed. Where do I pick this up? Or can you send me a copy immediately um, if you need an unofficial copy? Uh, sooner. So updating your documentation. So you went through all of that. You went through all the paperwork. Uh, the judge has given you the approval to state it like your name has been changed. Congratulations. Now it's the fun part. So we're going to update your documentation. Um, don't panic. Uh, it's going to be a long list I'm going to show you, uh, and it requires a bit of strategy. Um, so, you know, you will not be able to legally change your name without an order, signed in triplicate, sent in, sent back, queried, lost, found, subjected to public inquiry, lost again, and finally buried in soft peat for three months and recycled as fire lighters. Uh, from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, written by Douglas Adams. That's pretty much what it's going to feel like. It's it's very bogon bureaucracy, uh, and things move a bit slower. I've noticed in Santa Fe. No disrespect, uh, just something I've noticed. Okay, so this is the stage I'm at right now. And if anybody has any ideas on how to do this uh, strategically, uh, or perhaps um, just ease more easily, <laughs> uh, uh, do tell me. Email me. Uh, let me know. So. The, the first three I figured um, you start with your driver's license because in order to change your birth certificate, you need to scan or photocopy your driver's license and send that in with a certified copy uh, to change your birth certificate. And then your social security card. So those are your, I know Santa Fe has their top three, so legal name changes, these are your top three. Uh, so, okay, after that, so passport, that's gonna cost you some money and you also have to get a new photo. Uh, bank accounts, academic institutions, you're basically updating your breadcrumb trail of where you've been and studied and written papers and basically anywhere your name has been printed. Um, and that, you, know, you can go down that list on your own, but you know, your employment records, uh, the IRS, I, I highly recommend waiting until you have filed your taxes. Uh, if you're not planning on moving that quickly with the process, um, I haven't done that yet. 
<laughs> so I waited immediately until I had finished my taxes and then I started this, uh, the paperwork. So your college degrees, your diplomas, you're gonna wanna get those changed as well. Your medical records, utility bills. The two that I'm most worried about that is the biggest game of Tetris uh, is health insurance and pharmacy prescriptions um, and how those are gonna work in tandem. So you really have to work with your prescription provider on maybe like getting a 90 day supply and then you know really starting a, to, to hustle with changing the health insurance and the pharmacy prescriptions. Um, another thing to consider, drink your water. Um, so another thing to consider too, I, so I worked as a professional photographer for 15 years. Um, so I have bylines um, nationally and internationally. And sometimes I just Google myself to like see where my photos ended up. Um, so, you know, do I change those? Which ones do I change? You know, it is on the record, you know, it has been published in the newspaper. So it is public knowledge that somebody can Google me by my new name and by my old name. Um, I, I probably won't do anything about it because uh, I mostly, you know, put all my pride on, on writing and I really haven't published that much. Um, so, you know, good timing, I guess. I don't know. All right. So here we are at the end. Um, are there any questions? I don't know if I'm going too fast or... No, no questions or hand raised, um, but if anyone here attending has any questions, this would be a great time if you would like to raise your hand to be unmuted or type it there in the chat or Q&A. Yeah, also let me know if you want me to like go back and, and uh, discuss anything further because these documents are, I don't know. <laughs> they're, they, they, they're uh, easy to understand. It's just the process that like, goes into everything. Does anybody have any questions or? I don't see any. All right, cool. So something. Oh, great. Um, can you change your first, middle, and last name all at the same time? Yes, yes, you can. Let me close this. I am not, ooh, hold on. Oh, goodness. Um, the answer is yes. I am not a, there, I'm just gonna put that over there. Uh, so yeah, I changed my first, middle, and last name, um, referring back to my nerdum. Uh, so yeah, you can do it all at the same time. You can also, uh, I'm not changing my gender marker, um, but you can also with like your your birth records and um, you know wherever you change your, your passport, uh, you can change your uh, gender marker at the same time that you are changing your uh, legal name. Right. Any other questions? On your journey um, on mm -hmm. of changing your name. Did you find any pushback or, um, or like personal biases or any kind of challenges like that with anybody you worked with? So um, I have I have the privilege of working from home as a writer um, and curriculum designer. So uh, you know my dog my dog didn't know <laughs> that I changed my name, and um, I rent a casita, and the people next door are also non-binary, so it just worked out really well. Um, pushback. You know, I had a few people like a my photo mentor, for instance. Uh, you know, he was he was a bit hesitant to call me by my new name. Uh, he's a baby boomer, so I don't know if there's a, a disconnect there. Uh, but he eventually, you know, it didn't take very long. <laughs> um, did I have any pushback? No, not really. Um, I don't know, my social life is a little uh, sparse right now, especially since I, I moved here, uh, you know, within the past year and a half or so. Um, but no, not really. It's mostly that I chose to, I, I chose to put the French uh, accent agu uh, over the E so I could get that A sound without, you know, it being Theo, uh, but I didn't want to spell Teo with like two vowels without anything in between. Um, 
So the pushback there is mostly mechanical. <laughs> so like I'll get mail and it's instead of that E X N agu, it'll be like some strange character. Uh, so, you know, I get to have my name both ways. I could be Teo and Theo, uh, depending on, you know, what I'm filling out uh, subscription wise or like somebody mispronounces it uh, in a lift or something, so. How does the ads work? Um, I've, yeah. I've never thought about this process before. And I'm curious, like the ads that you have to post in papers, uh -huh. um, does everyone see that? Does everyone read that? And if someone's changing their name for um, reasons to protect themselves, maybe, but they have to do, will they still have to do the ad? Okay, so to answer the first question, yes, uh, newspapers, you know, it's, we are the paper of the record, um, you know, they keep the public record. So yes, everybody does see it. Uh, that way they can attend your court hearing and object uh, and be like, this person is trying to, to, you know, evade taxes or they owe me money and they're changing their name. So I can't track them down. Uh, so yes, it's like a birth announcement, marriage announcement, you're, you know, it's in uh, a legal ad section of the publication that you choose. Uh, the second one, no, uh, somebody who's changing their name in order to, uh, for, you know, to protect them themselves. Uh, there is a form in New Mexico that you can just waive uh, the entire legal advertisement process uh, due to safety reasons. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a question, will you send an email with the Google Doc or how do we access it? Oh, um, so in the conclusion, I have a QR code um, that will take you directly there. So conclusions, resources, and remarks. Um, so perfect timing, organic tra uh, transition. So where can I get the paperwork that I have so fondly have been speaking of? So this QR code leads directly to that public Google Drive folder uh, with all of the New Mexico legal uh, change paperwork. I'm still, like I said, ongoing assembly of all 50 states. Um, even though those resources do already exist, I think it would be super helpful just to have that at hand. Uh, and there is a direct link on the slide. Um, and again, these slides will be available in the folder, you know, logical sequential progress here, uh, but you know, you, uh, the QR code is the easiest way to do that. Um, and I suppose if uh, you're putting a description under the YouTube video, we can also include <clears throat> the, the direct link as well. Yeah, we can include the links um, uh, necessary under the YouTube recording of this event today, and we will get that up on the Santa Fe Public Library's YouTube channel um, shortly after this. So it'll be there most likely tomorrow for everyone with the links. Yay, great. All right. I don't see any other questions at this time, but I do want to just thank you, Taya, for presenting this information um, in such a, a fun and humorous and entertaining and just like this was digestible. So I really appreciate the way you've presented this. Um, and and providing this for, for everyone. So thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you so much for, for hosting me and accepting my, <laughs> my email of being like, hey, we should have something like this. Texas does, we should too. <laughs> but a, library, a lot of libraries um, seem to have like lawyers come in, but um, it doesn't seem all that necessary uh, to do this on your own. I suppose if you have like a criminal background um, or some other, I don't know. Uh, mostly I've seen people, uh, I've read about people in, um, encountering more barriers uh, when they have like a history of, uh, you know, like some sort of charges or criminal stuff um, behind them. So uh, two questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> Comments. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so again, this QR code should, should take you right there. Uh, and it is ongoing. Everything you need for New Mexico is in there, um, but I'm gonna see what else I can find. And Olivia, thank you so much again for uh, letting me know about 
uh, the July, um, how it likely won't be necessary in July. Um, so, okay, so we're in the conclusion part. So you're looking at like an approximate cost of about like 400, um, safely it's gonna be $450. And again, um, the reasonable timeline is about six months. Uh, again, like you wanna, you wanna uh, pad your schedule there, especially if you're gonna be traveling. And is all of it worth it? Yes, it is a very long process. You really have to be on top of it. It, it, it feels intimidating. It, it, and then you have to deal with all like the personal stuff of like, you know, it's super empowering for your identity and, and really aligning with who you are. Um, but it feels so weird. Like I understand when people are like, oh, it feels like forced compliance. And it's like, you don't know how I feel. Like I have to go around being like to people that already knew me <laughs> or know me. And I have to be like, and by the way, this is my new name. And you know, that's a, you might not get pushback for it, but you know, it does feel a little awkward. Um, it does go away eventually. Like, you know, you're on the phone with the, the plumber or the plumber's secretary, and then they're like, oh, what's your name? Who should I be calling? It's like, Teo, you should be calling Teo about the plumbing. <laughs> so it's, um, you get there, but you know, I was like walking around the dog park and I'm just like, and I talked to everybody again, I was, I was trained as a journalist. So I just talked to everybody I see. Um, I would talk to the trees, if they would talk back, that sort of person. Um, but I, I just, I kept wanting everybody to be like, well, so, oh, oh, what's your name? Like, oh, hi, hi, what's your name? Uh, so, you know, and then I went back and forth between Theo and Teo and, um, you know, I, I picked Teo with the E and the accent on Goo, so I'm legally a pain in the ass now. <laughs> um, I might change it if it gets too cumbersome, but that won't be for, for years. Um, so I did want to just add a little bit, um, since uh the everything that's going on in the country right now um this is my remark i have two things uh i really want to touch on um first i want to talk about um we'll get to toys uh quote here later in a few minutes um but i was thinking um i'm really into civil disobedience <laughs> Uh, photojournalism. Um, I, I spent a lot of time protesting with Black Lives Matter um, and, and mostly recording uh, and sticking to my role as a photojournalist. Um, but I'm spitballing here and this, this view is not endorsed by the library nor is it exactly harmful. Uh, it's, it's just more civil, civil disobedience is like it, a whole bunch of kids. Uh, you know, New Mexico is pretty much a safe haven for trans and non-binary folks. But, you know, if you wanted to tie up the lower courts, you could do some research, change your name, do it a few times, think about it. Um, it, would, it would cause a little bit of havoc. Uh, just, just throwing that out there. But, um, I don't know if it actually tie up the lower courts. It's just something I thought about, you know, anarchy for kids and adults. <laughs> so I really love this quote. Joy is an act of resistance. Um, and so Toy Derricott is a really, really prominent um, Black American poet. Uh, and this quote is originally rooted in the context of the Black women's liberation movement. So here, Joy is an act of resistance. She spoke about the significance of Black women finding joy and reclaiming their sense of self-worth and happiness in a society that historically marginalized and oppressed them. So within the context of this presentation, I'm using Derricotte's statement to highlight the idea that experiencing joy and celebrating one's own existence in the face of systemic oppression, here I'm specifically talking about the LGBTQA+, trans and non-binary communities um, and all the struggles that we're facing socially and uh, within you know, legislation. So if we're going to liberate one another, we need to choose ourselves and our joy first and foremost to cultivate our inner strength and inspire others. In this challenge, we need sprinters, we need triage, we need protests and voice directly 
following news of anti-trans laws, hate crimes, et cetera. But we also need long distance runners. We need folks who work and prepare, write and create, share stories slowly and deliberately. This is how we keep fighting and this is how we win. So every day that you wake up and you choose your joy as a non-binary person, as a trans person, as you know, a, somebody who's part of an oppressed group, that's how we become agents of positive change and contribute to a more resilient, hopeful and compassionate world. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> um, and happy Pride Month, everybody. I hope it's great uh, for everybody. And if you wanna find me on Instagram, uh, there's no accent agu over the E, Instagram. The internet does not allow such things. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram. And that is the presentation. So thank you very much. And I hope this is a helpful resource for you who are attending right now. And also um, those who are using this as a resource in the future. Oh, somebody just noted that Oh, Samantha Dunning, thank you. All court clerks are notaries and their services are free. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I have been comically underprepared <laughs> during this entire process. So I'm just like, you know, when people are like, uh, or, or what is the accusation that, um, that uh, there's this accelerated sort of transitioning uh, when somebody, you know, they're like, I'm trans and, you know, whether it's a child or an adult or whatever. Um, you know, people make this accusation of, you know, accelerated transition. And it's like, no, 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 no. I have felt this way basically my entire life. Like 1997, I, I went to Blockbuster to get my Kratz Creatures trading cards. And the woman behind the, the Blockbuster counter went, this young boy needs help. And I'm like, oh, I like that. I love that. My gender is trickster. <laughs> so, um, so there's that. <laughs> Uh, are there any other questions, comments? Um, there's a lot of, uh, I, I think I touched on like the, the awkward socialness. Um, I haven't had any pushback. I'm 34 years old and I'm tired already. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I really haven't. And it, I live in New Mexico, which, you know, what a, what a blessing it's been to move here. And, you know, when the election happened, you see a state that's completely blue. Uh, it's, it's a good feeling. I'm happy about my life choices. Any other questions? Any other knowledge, knowledge bits? Um, because there's a lot that I don't know, even within the community. Um, I was just, you know, sort of grasping for words when I, my gender Damien sort of uh, settled is the way I put it. Um, so if you have any other information, um, I would love to I don't know, also provide more resources within that public folder. Is everybody still there? We're still here. I think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all learning together and cool. so appreciate you, Taya. Oh, um, yeah, thank you so much. We can give it, um, a couple minutes though if anyone wants to think on it and provide any more helpful information or resources or comments or anything but happy pride all and Taya I'm so happy that you live here in New Mexico and in Santa Fe and we get to have you in our community here. Hey thank you so much and I'm really this is sort of like my my debut into the community um so I really appreciate you guys hosting me uh again. <laughs> Um, also, to the audience, like, and, and to you and uh, Megan, are there any other programs, stories, uh, things that you would want to see in the community um, to promote acceptance, to empower the, uh, you know, the trans and non-binary community? I know this is a pretty good start, um, but is, is there anything else you guys want to see? Um, I won't get into it, but like, uh, we're, I'm, going for my, my top surgery consult in July. And I think it would be a really interesting presentation, make it very PG. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't like blood and guts and stitches, uh, but I think it'd be a really interesting uh, presentation to talk about that. Um, and I'd love to know what you guys think. 
I think that would be amazing. Um, yeah, I would love it if we can plan something with you. I want to expand on this sort of programming beyond the month of June. Um, June is when you get a lot of community buy-in, <laughs> but I want to, <laughs> I want to expand beyond that. I'd also like to find ways to help people socialize a little bit more. Um, like you, I think before we started, you were talking about how libraries are a space that people can just be without being expected to spend money. Yes. And um, a lot of queer mm -hmm. spaces, meetups are centered around, you know, going out for a drink or something like that. And yeah. um, which is great. Um, I personally uh, don't drink anymore. Like I don't drink alcohol. Yeah, and so those, <laughs> those situations can be a little bit mm -hmm. um, difficult to navigate. So Absolutely. something about the library where everybody can hang out and no alcohol at the library or, you know, don't, you don't need to buy a meal, um, right. just show up and, and be you and be in a safe environment. I think that would be really cool. like, I don't know, like a mixer sort of. of yeah, thing. absolutely. I like that idea a lot. So, um, yeah. you know, just kind of shooting out ideas, but. Yeah, and it, 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 it you know, it empowers, um, you know, a different, like the, the sober community too, uh, that also happen to be in the trans and non-binary under that umbrella as well. I think that's a great idea. I know um, when I went to the Association of Writers and Writing Programs Conference, um, they typically have like an after party and it was really impressive to see that they also had like an, a separate after party for folks who um, or, you know, choose a sober lifestyle or they don't drink. Um, and it, it's really good to see that, uh, you know, there's there that spaces that typically um, are known for <laughs> for socializing uh, in, in nightlife and what have you. It's, it's nice to see that those spaces are being made for people. I agree. Plus, um, it can bring different generations together, too. I think yeah. a mm -hmm. lot of times um, you get one demographic. Um, I'm over here doing like hand gestures with my <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get you get one one or two de uh, age groups or demographics in an area, but the libraries bring together a lot of different people. So mm -hmm. you can get younger people learning from people who have been in the community for longer. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see more of that too. Uh, yeah, but thank you so much for, for doing this. That was a really good presentation. I was sad I couldn't make the, the live one, so I thought I could. Well, well the, the three folks that showed up, uh, like I said, um, they gave me some really good feedback. So I, uh, I souped up my, my PowerPoint slides uh, in the past few days um, since that live one. So you got the edited version, uh, but maybe we can do it again and uh, with these souped up slides and uh, do another do another program. I like that. Yeah, we look forward to it. Great. All right. Cool. Is there anybody? Anything else? Questions? Ask me anything. I have, I'll, I'll let you know if I have a boundary there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ask me anything. When we're offline, we definitely want to invite you to a couple things here. But um, thank you to Samantha, who's still here with us. I know we kind of we trailed off here in the end, but um, this was a great presentation. And uh, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you so much. All right. Should I end it there? Or? Yeah, I think we're we're good to go. Okay, cool. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much again. And have a have a great night. You, you too. too. Thank you. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Yeah, happy Pride. <laughs>